Hello, welcome back to this video and today we're going to use the wall as a prop. In this case, this is actually part of the improvised weapons, believe it or not. It's just using your environment as a way for you to protect yourself. In this case, it's going to be the wall. And I'm going to give you a couple of options. But first, I'm going to divide this into two different scenarios. In this case, a case scenario in which the other person is the one uh, putting the back against the wall. That's one case scenario. And you're trying to fight the person in front of the wall. In the other case scenario is the one in which you are going to be the one with your back towards the wall and the other person is going to be in front of you. So now, let's start, actually start with the uh, easiest one, which is the one in which you are going to be striking uh, from the front. Obviously the advantages are many because there's not many things that the person can do uh, or, or at least you have reduced the capacity of the other person to move towards the back because obviously there's very little space between the person and the wall and the only possibilities are on the side particularly bad if you are as we are in a corner because you are also reducing the capacity to move towards that side which means that you can calculate the better capacity is or the only uh, capacity for the other person to escape will be on that side that's very useful for when you're for example tricking the other person going to one direction like for example that way because then you know that the person is going to naturally go that way and you can take advantage of that for a follow-up like a kick but let's actually start with the simple things that you can do first you can punch towards the back of the person and in this case you're going to emphasize a little bit more the pushing than just the damage you're going to cause with the punch. What do I mean by that? Let's say that I went here against a punch, I moved 45 degrees inwards, in this case outwards, excuse me, on the outside of the person's arm, and I punch. I don't necessarily care that the person covered. Let's say that when I went to punch, the other person uh, covered already because the other person is weak. I don't necessarily care that much because I'm going to focus more on the pushing of my punch. Now why? When I went here with an angle, now I'm going to push the person against the other side and first of all as you can notice this side is uncovered which I can take advantage of not only to strike or towards the back which I can but also this is clear so you can take advantage of that to for example knee that's a few options that you can have once you push the person away but again the idea behind this is to kind of like distract the person not necessarily to punch with a lot of power because even if you don't manage to hit, uh, there's still something that are going to be the is they're going to be uncovered. So those things are going to be the ones that you're going to take advantage of. But obviously, if you manage to actually punch, let's say that you managed and actually succeeded at punching, that's even going to be more useful because now you can really cash both in. You can actually cash the first strike that you did and the second one, which is a follow-up hopefully because that served as a distraction. And talking about pushing, you can also take advantage of that, particularly when you clear both hands and push towards the other person's uh, back. In that case, the person is going to, or you're going to call attention towards that pushing, and particularly towards the back hitting the back, in, in this case, the wall. Once you do that, you can do a follow-up with a knee, for example, which you can do, or even here, distance yourself and kick uh, to the groin slightly higher, or you can do this and enter with a follow-up elbow, for example. Those are possibilities that you can do just by pushing. Over what you're trying to do here is to clear the hands first. So this is uh, clear, so you can push. Definitely you can use the same thing with an elbow. You can use the same thing with an elbow and then finish with a knee on your own. You can do the same thing with a headbutt. The person goes back and you can do the follow-up with the knee and, uh, excuse me, with an elbow and the knee. But the important thing is, again, that, that that last moment in which you notice that the person is hitting the back, you use it as a distraction to attack the follow-up. In this case, you go high, so you can attack low. One more thing that we can use, we're actually going to uh, do two more things. One is you can use these as a prop for your takedowns. Let's say that you go to your, um, in this case, let's actually separate a little bit so you can see it, to your osotogari. You came towards the back and you're kicking, and when you do this, you're going to take advantage of that wall to not only create more pressure, but also to serve as a distraction as before. And you don't even have to, obviously you're not going to finish the takedown because the wall is not going to allow you to do that. But the idea behind this is to push and follow up after that with an elbow on your, for example. You can use the same thing as a way for you to control by entering, for example, with a headbutt. And after that, you're going to do your kick and even finish with an elbow of the same side, which again, is actually more difficult to see because the other person hopefully is going to be distracted by the impact of the back of the head or the top part of the back against the wall. Lastly, think about it this way. The person is going to kick you. You know this and then you know that you can push the person towards the back and the first reaction that when we do that, 
Uh, if not, you should watch the video that we have on how to respond against the front kick, the first video. Every time you do this and you push towards the back, naturally the person is going to try to hop. Let's actually do that again to try to recover the range, in this case, the, the balance. The problem is there's nothing else on the back, meaning it's literally just a wall, so there's nothing else, there's nowhere else to escape. So there's only a possibility to either go to the side, which is a little more complicated, or to hit the wall first. And that's when you're gonna take advantage of, for example, to continue pushing and go for your takedown by kicking the leg, in this case, sweeping the leg, and hopefully kicking the other person towards the ground. For that, is important that you actually take advantage of the other person's hop so when the person's hop that's when you're going to actually kick so the person can lower uh, meaning you can actually sweep the leg much much easier than that if not worst case scenario you can enter go again you can enter with a big entrance with the arm at the same time as you can see one goes forward and the other one goes backwards and then that way you can do the takedown much much easier and as you can see everything is going to happen next to the wall which means that at the end the person is going to be trapped against the wall and you can finish there with a knee for example on the ground now second case scenario i'm actually the one facing in this case the other person and i'm with my back in front of the wall one thing that you can do, you can technically do the same pulling, but now you would have to move sideways. Let's say that the person kicks you. Now you can actually take advantage of that and pull. That is a possibility, but I find that more complicated than anything, so I'm not going to um, emphasize that too much today. But I like the concept of pulling, and that is particularly useful for when you're actually countering a strike. Let's say that person attacks you with an attack uh, of a punch and you enter deeply. And when you enter, you enter with a form. Now, in this case, you can trap the neck right away. And even if the person is trying to punch you, you can also knee first. When you do the knee, your person is going to go low. You take advantage of that and then you smack the person's body against the wall. Let's actually go from that side so people can see it from that angle. Once you go there, again, the idea is to enter deeply, to use your form more than anything else, is this. And once you enter again, hook it, that's important, knee, and you can smack with either two hands or by pulling. I'm using two hands, but now, rather than pushing with two hands, I'm using the pulling. So once I knee, I'm gonna pull and push. Push with my left and pull with my right. Now, as you can see at the end, when the person is here, you can smack the person with the elbow. You can do a follow-up very quickly after that. The idea is again, to change or to reverse uh, the roles. The person is in front, and then you're gonna push the person in front of the wall, and then that way you're gonna close the space and you are more capable of striking that way. One other way to deal with this is by pulling. Uh, in this case, I actually like the pulling, particularly when we're in close range. Here you can enter with a headbutt, and then from here you can trap the jacket or any sweater and then pull here towards the other side because now, not only that, you have a follow-up with your own uh, elbow. You can do the same thing here and enter with a knee, same as I was doing before, but now I'm gonna pull directly and similar to what I was doing before, I'm going to finish with an elbow on my own. Now, another possibility is to do a complement or to complement the wall uh, to my takedowns. In this case, let's say that we go for an uchimata. In this case, same thing, I'm entering with a headbutt. I'm switching, I'm hooking, I'm going to go for the kick. Now, obviously, there's a lot of distance between this, uh, between the person and the wall. And what I'm gonna do is actually going to kick and push a little bit. And if I manage to do that, because the person stumble, all this kind of complicated, I will follow up with a punch. But most of the times, if you manage to do the takedown, the person would actually fall on the ground. We're gonna see that possibility. In this case, let's say that I actually enter. It could be like this way, right? It could be that I went here and I entered with a headbutt as I was doing before. The idea is after that, I'm gonna do the takedown. Once I kick, I'm gonna push towards the ground. Look at what happens. The person is gonna fall now directly on the corner and in this case in the corner it's much easier for you to follow up with a kick a knee on your own because now there's even less space to escape because you have reduced the amount of space that the person can use to that side basically because i'm already here person cannot escape that side obviously the person cannot escape backwards the only way that the person can escape is in that direction which is very complicated thank you so much so 
These are just a few ways that you can use the wall into your benefit. Keep in mind that, again, I've selected just a few. There are many other ways that you can use them. But I hope that you like it. And if you do, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I see you in the next one. Whoosh.